Please go ahead, sir. We are live now. Good morning. And a very warm welcome to another webinar on capacity building series, Atmanirbhar Bharat, moving towards self-reliant India. The festival season is not too far away. And I wish and pray for tremendous joy and good health for each and every one of you who have joined us this morning. The happenings of the past one and a half year have been quite unnerving and difficult for the entire mankind. Having said this, the manner in which a collective response was planned and executed has once again underscored our unwavering spirit, one that always remained steadfast. It is because of this that the COVID pandemic has largely been brought under control and greater normalcy restored in different spheres of life. Today's leadership session with accomplished women is extremely relevant and requires our undivided attention. Before I get into the specifics of today's program, it is firstly important to stress on the fact that females make up over 48% of our population. And logic clearly states that it is only when they play significant part in different spheres of activity that a nation can truly move ahead and achieve its full potential. At present, there are 432 million working age women in India, of which 343 million are not in paid formal work. Currently, the contribution to GDP by women stands at merely 18%. A report by McKinsey Global Institute has estimated that India could add 770 billion to its GDP by 2025, simply by giving equal opportunity to women. So what exactly are we missing? It is the leadership opportunity, a mindset where many still believe that males do a better job than females. A mindset where the roles of women are defined and they are not allowed to follow their passion and areas of interest. Fortunately, today, many women are shattering the glass ceiling and making outstanding contributions in different fields. What is required is that many more women, like Captain Nivedita Basin, who is a trailblazer in her field and has a role model for thousands and lakhs, not just in our profession of aviation, but for a woman in general, achieve top positions in their respective fields and so a beacon of inspiration for others. Another shining example is the exemplary performance by India's female athletes in the recent concluded Tokyo Olympics. While some like Mirabai Chenu, E.V. Sandhu, Davlina won medals, there are Others like Aditi Ashok, Kamal Preet Kaur, and our women hockey team 
who might have missed out on medals by a whisker, but they have made all of us proud. But they have done what is indeed is the most, inspired a whole generation to achieve greatness. They emerged as a role model. These Olympics witness India's best performance ever. And none of this would have been possible had it not been for the stellar performance of our female players. I firmly believe that today there is absolutely no difference between a boy and a girl. If there is, it is that the girls can do a better job than their male counterparts. That is how much things have changed. It is now purely on getting the participatory numbers in place. I believe that the Honorable Prime Minister's clarion call of Atmir Nirbhar Bharat, vocal for local, will achieve its desired results only and only when the women of our country participate in much greater numbers in various fields. We are getting more traction in this regard, but much more is needed to be done. It is a matter of great honor for us to have Captain Navetita Basin as our guest speaker. Her achievements actually require no introduction. She is a legend, an aviator par excellence, the wife of a captain, the mother of two aviators, both her daughter and his son are captains with a leading career and a doting grandmother, though she doesn't look like one. She is so young, you know, you can all see and be inspiration, take inspirations from her. She also take out time for yoga, cycling, golfing, swimming, and much more. The sheer number of responsibilities and jugglery of roles and the flawless execution of each makes me think that she is nothing short of a real life superhero. In 1989, she was just 26. She became the world's youngest women jet commander. She is also the first wide body A300 female training captain in India and was the co-pilot of the first all women crew flights in 1985. She indeed gave wings to her dreams of soaring high and flying with the birds. This was the time when women hardly existed in the field of aviation. Today, Indian carriers employ nearly 12.5% women pilots. And India tops the proportion of women pilots than any other nation in the world. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what a single gem can do, not just create a path for herself, but clear it for so many more in the years to come. And we thank you, Nivedita Ji, for showing this path to many people. In 2012, she became the world's first women pilot to fly the Boeing 787 Dreamliner, and recently superannuated as the executive director and chief of flight safety at India. I know that I will be repeating myself because she has so many firsts that I narrated, but when you read them collectively, you realize how many firsts are there to her credit? 
youngest jet captain in the world, part of the first all women crew flight, first pilot from erstwhile Indian Airlines to command Boeing 787 Dreamliner, first wide body A300 female training captain in India, first female airline pilot chef for flight safety for Air India, a capacity in which he maintained an oversight on the polar operation of Boeing 777 and supervised the first polar flight in January 2021. I'm sure many of the participants are simply in awe of her and her high rate achievements. She is far from done. After superannuating, she has been focusing on sustainability, use of sustainable aviation fuel, fulfilling UN SDGs, along with lending her invaluable time and experience to inspire and skill generation next. In fact, when I spoke to her, she readily agreed to grace the occasion that ladies and gentlemen, is her level of commitment. And I'm sure all of us will have a memorable and invaluable takeaways from today's session. She has indeed lived her life queen size. It is a matter of great honor for me to request her to deliver the address. And I wish this webinar all the very best. Thank you and Jai Hind. Over to you, Nivedita. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Anilji. I think I'm really, really moved and humbled to hear such kind words from a person, a luminary like you, who's been in the industry for so many years. And the research you have done, uh, you know, uh, to look into my life and to mention even the smallest of achievements have are really mind boggling. So I think. We have to begin today by thanking, of course, the Associated Chambers of Commerce and Industry of India, ASO Champ, for having me here today. Mr. Vinita Agarwal, Mr. Deepak Sood, Mr. Suman Sena, yourself, uh, Anilji, and all your team who have been so kind. They've been coordinating with me over the past uh, more than 10 days for this uh, webinar today. So what better time could uh, could we have than today to have this webinar? Today is the Air Force Day, 8th of October, we all know. And their motto, touch the sky with glory. So yes, each one of us in our capacity has to aim for that, touch the sky for glory. It doesn't mean that you really have to touch the sky, but yes, make your life worth living. Make do something every day for which you are proud of and for which your future generations will be proud of. Today is also the second day of Navratri. As we know, we are celebrating Ma Durga and her eight avatars. So not only do we have to celebrate her today, but we have to celebrate women daily for all that they do, for all that they can do, and for all that they're capable of. And we are at the, on the eve of the UN's uh, International Day of the Girl, which is on the 11th of October. So yes, uh, we have to celebrate women all over the world. And today I'm gonna to share my life's journey with each one of you. I can see more than 50 participants are here today. At the end of our session, I'll be glad to answer any questions. And it's gonna be a very simple presentation, no big terms, no technicalities, just to tell you that if I can do it, so can you. And I think it's very important for each one of us having reached any position, any state, any level in our lives to share our trials and tribulations with generation next, with the future generations. If we don't do it, who will? And how will they know how we have reached this position, whatever it may be? It doesn't mean that you have to be the CEO of a company. You could be anybody in your life. You could be a mother, you could be a wife. But for in order to do anything, women have to go through many struggles. And it's important that you share our experiences with everybody so that life for them becomes much easier and they can look up if they need to have a role model. So I think we should begin with uh, a short film, which I made myself, but this was made uh, three, four years back. 
So I am sure you'll enjoy watching it. This encapsulates my journey. Uh, and thereafter, we will continue with a little uh, talk that I will give you. So let's have a look at the movie now. Uh, so, well, we saw the short film, which uh, uh, I had made myself a few years back. I think it was four years back. And let me now uh, and uh, invite you to join my life and how my journey has shaped over a period of time. So let's go ahead and let's uh, see some nice pictures that I would like to share with you. And we will go to the beginning of this powerpoint presentation and yes this is how we start so i hope you all can uh, see my screen and just give me a thumbs up if you can see it and you can hear me clearly yes thank you so much so well uh, i'm as i said earlier i'm again once more humbled incredible journey of nivedita basin it seems surreal and like a dream but it's a dream that has come true, which I had ever since I was a child. So while in school, I will just give you a little background about how I dreamt to be a pilot and how I dreamt to do something different. While in school, uh, I didn't want to study. And I thought that freedom meant flying up in the sky. I would look at the birds flying while I was in school. I was in Carmel Convent and thereafter at DPS Archipuram. And I always thought that freedom meant not to fly, to be flying with the birds in the sky and to just do what you wanted to do. I was not really very keen on academics, so never did fantastically, but I did want something. I craved to stand on the podium, to stand on the number one position, but that was not possible if I would only pursue academics. I knew that in my heart of hearts. And how else could I reach that number one position? So I, over a period of time, I read about flying, about my neighbor was a pilot. I used to see him going uh, on flights and I was very enamored. And I thought, well, yes, this is a field where I would uh, like to venture in. And I didn't bother. This was the year maybe in the early 1970s, in the 70s. I didn't bother about how many women were there. The thought never crossed my mind that I was a girl and I should even think about what I wanted to do. All my parents, said was, what you do, you must always finish. Start the journey, complete it, and then move on to a next journey. So while I was in school, I joined the gliding club and my parents 
always supported me. They never doubted me. So that was the first step. The first step in my long aviation career that I had the support of my parents, my family, my sister, my younger brother, my relatives, of course, doubted me a little bit at that point of time. But then I think as time passed, they also got the confidence and conviction that, yes, I was determined. So my first step was to be determined. And I will talk about the three D's, which I always talk about in every talk that I give. The three D's are the most important three lessons in our lives. So here I am in the year 1980, this was after a gliding uh, event and receiving a prize from the late Sri Sanjay Gandhi. In our lives, it's very important to also commend wherever you are, whatever you may be, and I will keep repeating this. It doesn't matter what position you're in, but to commend those around you, those colleagues who are working alongside you is very important. And when you're commended, when somebody congratulates you for what you've done, you get that encouragement to go forward. And this was my first step. And before this, I had done aero modeling in which also I received a prize. So that gave me that initial confidence that yes, I can do it. Gliding, of course, was not so expensive and uh, my parents could afford it, though it was difficult for them. My father had changed jobs from being a very successful uh, marketing man to having his own business. And he started, he left DCM Delhi Cloth Mills and he joined, he started his own business. Lot of loans, lot of loans, very heavy loans, started his own plastic manufacturing uh, company. And my mother toiled day and night. So what you see today is the result of many years of resilience. And this is what I learned in my life, to be resilient and to be tenacious. Whatever you want, you can do. And the world will move along with you to help you achieve your goals and your dreams. We could ill afford a flying, uh, flying training for me. I knew that. And so I started studying. In fact, I also appeared for my medical exams. And right in the middle of my medical exams, I got a message from my mother and she called me and she said, oh, well, we've applied for you for a scholarship from uh, Bihar, Patna and you have to go for the test and i said no i will not go because i didn't want to leave delhi being rebellious young convent educated i didn't want to leave the you know the comforts of my home in delhi and then travel to a place in bihar but as luck would have it i had to there was no other option if i didn't i would never have been a pilot so i left home i went to my grandmother's house and i lived with her for almost two and a half years and my uncles and they looked after me and here i am in patna looking very happy but pretty much not so happy inwardly because i was troubled a lot by the boys over there because they thought that an outsider from delhi had come and taken away one of their scholarships it didn't matter to me my i was focused and my dream was just to be an airline pilot to fly the biggest aeroplane of indian airlines and actually as a child i was very sorted I knew exactly what I wanted, though I knew about Air India. I did not want to join Air India simply because by that time I had met the two women pilots of Indian Airlines, Captain Durba Banerjee, and you'd be surprised to know that she joined the airline as early as 1966. And I was just doing the maths while Mr. Rajput was talking. You know how many years back that was? 55 years back. 55 years back, the first woman commercial airline pilot joined Indian Airlines. So it means India was progressive, India is progressive, parents were progressive, and today's talk is a lot about parents too, because I would like to motivate them as well. That let your daughters, let your sons do whatever they wish, give them a chance, don't kill their dreams in the initial stages. So if they don't get an opportunity, how will they know what they want to do? So I searched ahead, I got my scholarship. This is my instructor and another girl also joined. Of course, she could not continue flying because of health reasons. And now she's settled in Melbourne, but I'm still in touch with her. So over a period of time, you know, as we go ahead, it's important also not to forget your friends, to forget those who have helped you and supported you in your journey. Be mindful, be kind to the people who have been a part of your journey. That is why I would like to show this uh, 
photograph to you. This girl, Sunita, helped me a lot. You know, it was a feeling that there were two of us. We were not alone. So trials and tribulations, a lot of difficulties in the flying school. And thereafter, I came back to Delhi with my license in 1982. I had to wait up almost a year. Job opportunities were hardly any. And uh, I started studying. I studied to become an instructor. And I was almost going to join the Ludhiana Flying Club as an instructor when the vacancy for Indian Airlines came up and I applied and I studied day and night. And here I would also like to mention a fact not many know till today. The instructor who was teaching, who was giving coaching classes, I went up to him and I told him, I said, Mr. Dugal, my parents cannot afford your fees. And he looked at me and he said, what do you want to do? I said, I want to join your coaching classes because everybody is joining your coaching classes and I want to get into Indian Airlines. He said, then just sit. Once you get in, whatever you want, you can give me if you wish. Otherwise, I will be the happiest if you get into Indian Airlines. So these are people who have helped me along my life. I still remember them. I cherish these memories and I'm glad that I did not hesitate in asking for help. So this is another very important thing I want all of you to remember. It's never too late to ask for help. You're never too old to ask for help. When you need help, you yourself can help yourself. Nobody else. I joined, uh, before I joined uh, Indian Airlines, uh, uh, actually soon after I joined Indian Airlines, I was in Hyderabad on training and I met my future husband, whom you see over here. We were very young, 22 and 23 only. And uh, of course, it was almost like love at first sight because I wanted to get married. I had already decided that uh, I would get married and I would have children. And the earlier two ladies were not married, Captain Zurba Banerjee and Captain Sudamni Deshmi. That was their choice. And this was my choice. It did not mean that one was superior to the other or one wanted to show and do other things. But this is what I wanted to do. This is what my heart wanted to do. So I got married. And I got married to a very lovely family. And this is my father-in-law, uh, who is no more, but he was more than a father to me. And he was my protector in aviation. So when I joined Calcutta as a first officer, you can see I have two stripes and his, he has four stripes. When I joined as a first officer, he protected me and he introduced me as the daughter-in-law and the whole of Calcutta base treated me like Indian Airlines daughter-in-law. And it was the best moments of my life when I was so well accepted in a male-dominated world. At that time, I was the third woman to join uh, Indian Airlines as its pilot. And uh, we had around 420 pilots at that time, and I was the third one. It was, of course, a dream come true, but yet the struggles were to follow. So this was initial. and. I joined and we started flying from Calcutta to all the lovely cities of India and our lives were around the Brahmaputra, the Brahmaputra Valley. South Bank, starting from Guwahati, going to North Bank, Baseport, then again South Bank, Jorhat, the North Bank, Leelabari, Mohanbari, Dibrugar, to as far and flung places like Tezu. And Tezu had a runway, which was like a kacha runway made of PSP sheets. Here again, I must mention that Many of the pilots, the captains whom I flew with, because I was a co-pilot, many of the captains I flew with were reluctant to accept me in the cockpit because they had not seen women by their side. And they always uh, worried that we would not be as good as our male counterparts. And this is when the resilience, which had built into me early in my life came in handy. And I showed to them that what a woman what a man can do, a woman can do as well and even better. So at every point I had to prove myself and only not for myself, but for the generations who would follow me. For them, I had to show that, yes, I could be as good and even better than my male counterparts so that Indian Airlines and Air India would never doubt uh, admitting women and opening the doors for women. This was the first flight, uh, all women crew that uh, Mr. Rajput had mentioned, and this was in the year 1985, Calcutta to Silchar. 
young first officer on the left, that is B, in the center is Captain Sudhamani Deshmukh, Purabi Rao, and uh, Ms. Chakrabarti. So we were four of us on the Fokker friendship. It was very, very, uh, this flight was given a lot of publicity. And yes, this was just to show the world that India was surging ahead. India was surging ahead to be an Atmanirbhar Bharat. From 1985, they've been touching the sky in more ways than none. This was the second flight we did all women crew flight. This was on the Boeing 737 and we flew from Calcutta to Goa. Uh, sorry, from uh, Bombay to Goa. And of course, here is our finance director on the left. He's welcoming us on arrival. Many stages in our lives. And yes, it was not easy to go on. Thereafter, um, in the year 1987, while I was flying, I, I, and I was very lucky to have very good instructors who taught me, who taught me to be humble, to be not to be overconfident. That was the first lesson I learned from my gliding instructor, not to be overconfident. Because when we fly, we have to respect the weather. We have to get along with all our crew, so many on board. On a modern day airliner, we may have as many as 18 flight crew members. And we have to work with all of them. So when I met my instructor, and this was 1987, I was expecting my first child and I was already flying because Indian Airlines did not have a maternity policy and I didn't know what to do, how to go about it. So when I met him, he said, he said, your safety and the safety of the aircraft and the passengers is paramount. Don't fly now and go on leave. So I went on leave and thereafter, we found the rules and IKO allowed us to join back uh, flying 42 days or six weeks after the baby was born. And believe it, or not, believe it or not, on the sixth ending of the sixth week, with my child only six weeks old, both of them, my son as well as my daughter, I reported back to Indian Airlines. And as I said, this was just to show and to carve a niche for ourselves in the airline. If I wouldn't do it this way, it would have been very difficult for the hundreds and thousands of girls to follow. Six weeks old, leaving your child with your parents or your in-laws and going for flying training because you haven't flown for more than nine or 10 months is very difficult. But I carried on and thereafter so many girls have joined and as uh, Mr. Rajput said, yes, 12 and a half percent of women are now at Indian Airlines, Air India, and we are the highest percentage of women pilots in the world because Indian Airlines, Air India, and the other airlines in India saw that women were at par with their male counterparts. While my daughter was still, I think, a few months old, I was called to do my solo all-women crew flight on the Boeing 737. This was from uh, Hyderabad to Vizag. Of course, when duty calls, you cannot refuse. Till now, I had not stayed overnight and I had not, not left my daughter, who was only a few months, four or five months old. I had to leave home. I had to go and be happy and be stoic and operate the flight and show the world that, yes, we are here. These are my children when they were very young. Very often, they would fly with me in the cockpit. Those days, the rules were not uh, so stringent and uh, strict, you know. Everything changed after 9-11, uh, everything changed. And here they are flying with me. And I think the flying bug bit them very early because literally they were born in the cockpit of airliners. So they've traveled with me far and wide, even till today. E even till today, uh, they fly with me and they're both airline captains. My son is in uh, Air India. Triple seven Boeing triple seven captain, and my daughter is uh, captain on the A320, Airbus 320 with Indigo. All is not well, and all will not be well when we fly. So, there are many emergencies, there are many situations that we have to take care of, that we have to be in command of when we fly. And how do we do it? By following the procedure, by following the standard operating procedures, by following checklists, by training by studying, by studying every single day. This is the windshield on the right. You can see the windshield, which is cracked. And on the left, you can see a close up shot of how the windshield was cracking while we were on a flight from Milan, Italy to Delhi. Yes, but like I said, when we fly, we have a lot of 
stages of safety, and we have a lot of redundancy in our aircraft. So there are three layers, and it depends which layer has cracked. So we did our checklist, we followed our checklist, we saw that the pressurization was normal, we could continue. However, my co-pilot had to be uh, strapped in all the time that we flew, because in case there was a rapid depressurization, in case the windshield blew off, he would be safe in his seat. So following all safety precautions, we continued with the flight and landed after six hours in uh, Delhi. One of the Minor emergencies we've had, I've had during my flying career. Of course, there have been many. On the left, you see a cloud. You you will all call it a cloud. We call it a cumulonimbus. What is a cumulonimbus or a CB as we call it, as aviators call it? This is what you see when you sit out of the window. A beautiful scene, the sun uh, setting in the sky and the beautiful white, you know, cotton clouds. But what does it mean to the aviator? It means a lot of danger. On the right, you see my instrument, the ND as we call it, the navigation display. And you can see, uh, if you can see my pointer, otherwise if you can see the red on the left, uh, on the right side of the instrument panel, if you can see a red followed by a tiny yellow outline and a green outline. So, so the red outline is the heart of this cumulon numbers cloud, and we have to stay away from it. 20, 40 miles, depending on the intensity. And this is what we see. So I'm just trying to show you what you see and what we see, how, you know, when it rains and there's a thunderstorm, you say, oh, the weather is so good. And we say, oh, we have to fly through this weather, you know, again. So this is what uh, relativity is all about. Something that you see and something that we see. Challenges in our career are many in everybody's career. It's how you follow them, how you, you know, resolve them, and how you go through life's challenges. On the left, you can see an Air India Jumbo, the biggest aircraft Air India has had with four engines. And I was the captain of an Airbus uh, 330. The year was 2011. Do any of you all remember what happened in the year 2011 in February? in the world, in Africa, in Libya. Yes, it was a Libyan civil war. And we were called, Air India was called as always to evacuate the thousands of Indians who lived in Libya. It was utter chaos. We started our evacuation. The Indian Navy and Air India were summoned to evacuate the Indians who lived in and around uh, Tripoli, Libya. And this was called Operation Homecoming. We evacuated more than 15,000 Indians from the city of Tripoli as well as Sabah. So initially it was only Air India. Thereafter, uh, the private airlines were also allowed to operate one flight each, which was Jet Airways and Kingfisher Airline at that point of time. So 26th February, we started and it was, uh, we completed it uh, during the year. So why did I put this picture and why is this so important? After I landed in Delhi, and of course, we always make announcements when we fly. So after I landed in Delhi, the cabin crew came and said, there's a passenger who's waiting to meet you. So I said, yes, for sure. And I just wondered, I said, who could want to meet me on an evacuation flight from Tripoli to Delhi? And there I see a lady covered, her head covered in a burqa. And I did not recognize her instantly, and she cried and hugged me. What did she want to tell me? I didn't know. Thousands of thoughts wandered through my mind, and she reminded me. She said, I'm your neighbor from Calcutta. I'm the one who lived next door, and my family still lives, lives next door, and thank you so much for bringing me here today. It was heart-wrenching to see her crying. She had left everything behind in Tripoli when she came. She's a professor in the university she teaches. And these are the stories, you know, which motivate you and which inspire you and help you to go on in your life's journey. After this, one more event. Yes, while we work, we have some time also, spare time. And we go on holidays also. So this is the time for skill development. Skill development once when you're, you know, before your profession, 
So that is when you skill yourself initially and thereafter skill yourself throughout your life. So here I was in a job which I thought I would never have to study, but fate had other things in store for me. I had to study all my life. And skills. So if you have the time, please, please, I, this is a request I would make to you. Please do not waste a single moment of your time learning, skilling. Here I am, you know, with a new camera, my friend in, I, I make friends quite easily, but more with women because I think it's a matter of security for me, you know, when I'm traveling around the world. So this is my friend Kaori Kojima from uh, Tokyo, Japan, and she's a plane spotter. And I also do a little bit of plane spotting. So beginning to hone my skills in photography. How about fear? Are we, all, are we born fearless? Can we do anything? And if I'm a pilot, am I still scared of jumping out of an aircraft? Yes, I am. And I'm unabashedly, I'd like to tell you that, yes, I too am scared of so many things. But life is not about being scared and staying scared. It's about moving on. So how do we move on to conquer our fears? So while my daughter was finishing her course in uh, Madrid, a uh, flying course, she had, and after she finished, we both went to uh, a city. I cannot really remember the name. The, the city that you all saw in uh, uh, Sevilla. Okay, Sevilla, which you all must have seen in the movie. Uh, which one was that? Okay, I'll tell you the name of the movie. Zindagi na milegi dubara. So I went, we went to Sevilla and we enrolled and I was paying the money and she's telling me, uh, mommy, we only, it's only for one person. So I said, no, for two people. She said, who's the second one? So I said, it's me. And she was stunned because she didn't expect that at that point of time, I would jump out of an airplane and I would skydive. So life is all about conquering our fears, moving ahead and being comfortable. This was one of the fears I had. As life moved on, I started giving a lot of my time to aviation education, inspiring young girls, young minds, children. It's very important to meet children, to get to their level, to talk to them, to show them what you are and to show them where they can reach. It, it's not about money. It's not about resources is just about showing them a dream. If they don't dream, how will they know what they can do? And this is at one, uh, the left one is at the women in aviation function that was in Goa. And the right one is at Chanda Vidyale, Chandya, Chanda Satsang Vidyale, in a small village uh, four hours from Delhi. So I spend my time, I give a lot of my time to aviation education. I think that's very important. And that is what I learned from the many organizations that have been a part of the women pilots organizations about which I will talk a little later. So this is at the same school. Look at the enthusiasm with which they are sitting. Chanda Satsang Vidyale Parivar Me Aapka Swagat Hai. You can see that written on the board at the back with the teachers, with the students. It doesn't matter whether they can afford it or not, but yet when they meet a role model, it will inspire them to do something in their lives. And that is most important. And as with aviation education, whatever opportunities we get, we have to take them. We have to bite the bait, actually. And we don't have to waste time. So here I am in Los Angeles on the left. My own nephew is uh, uh, interviewing me at one of the museums, and they have a radio show. And on the right, this is, of course, with All India Radio. So sharing my journey again with people, answering their questions, just telling them that how a normal person can achieve something and how a normal person can do something. What we see today is a result of years of hard labor, hardships, but it doesn't mean that we do not share our life's journey so that everybody who wants to come into this field will find it difficult. For us, we have to make it easier for generation next. So this is one of our organizations, the Indian Women Pilots Organization. And here you see three of the founder members, Rabia Fatehali on the left, Chanda Savant Buddha Bhatti in the center, and Ms. Mohini Shroff, the lady with the gray white hair. These were the three ladies who started flying in Bombay Flying Club years back in the early 60s. And they formed this organization, which is one of the oldest in the world. It's more than 55 years old. 
and we all are members of this. I've been a member more than, I think, 40 years now. So women will support women, but it's not necessary that they have their back all the time. I know it's cliched when I say they do not support because many a time when we are competitive, I think women do not consciously support other women. It's not so, I think, with men, but this is my personal opinion and my feeling. It may not be the same for everybody, but I have no qualms about saying that. Here, this is the best organization in the world, the 99s. The 99s, because in the year 1929, 99 women pilots got together and formed an organization of women pilots all over the world. We are now almost 6,000 members worldwide. This was uh, at Cairo when we got together and 33 uh, women from 33 countries joined in. And this is what binds us, you know, a common goal, a common objective to help each other and to support each other. When we reach any position, it's important for us to throw that ladder down, to lower that ladder. It has to be an invisible ladder. Yes, we don't have to tell anybody what we are doing, but it has to certainly be there. The ladder has to be there. Otherwise, it's not right that we have achieved something and we do not want to help the next generation. This is again the same organization in different parts of the country. This was in Jordan on the left, women from three different nationalities. One is a pilot, one is an, and two are engineers. On the right bottom, you see women from Sri Lanka. They are also members of an organization and the world unites us. The world is just a globe. It's a tiny globe and we can all join hands and rise. Here is the last organization that I would like to talk about, Women in Aviation. This is our India chapter uh, with the past uh, Minister of Civil Aviation. And we coined this term, Beti Ki Udan, Desh Ka Swabhiman, in line with the government's call of Afindar Bhar Bharat, of Beti Bachao, Beti Parhao. All uh, personnel from the civil aviation gathered together. And of course, we try our best to inspire and to educate women. The Zonta Club, of course, we all know we have to, you know, be entrepreneurs. We have to give back to society. We have to do some work and pay it forward is the term that comes to my mind. So after having reached some way, after having achieved your goal, it's time for you to pay it forward in any which way that you can. Be a part of organizations, give back to society, your time, money, if you have, and your experiences. Those are so important and those experiences, not many people will have and will not many people will be able to share. So it's very important that you share your experiences with the world. Philanthropy, if you have the time, the money, yes, go ahead by all means we talk about csr every company has a csr um, department so this is my idea of philanthropy i came to know about the organization called aerobility which raises money for uh, differently abled students who would like to fly and the aim is to um, raise money so that they can fly and this is what I had to do. I had to get on the wing of this Boeing's German, the biplane and fly. And my friends cheered me on. My cousin from London, she came. My three friends, we got together and we did this. And I think this was the best experience of my life. Again, thrilling. Again, it was not a box that I had to tick in. Never. I never, I never tick boxes that other people create. I create the boxes for others to fill in. It's what you want. Don't follow, do not follow other people for what they've done. Do not compare yourself to anybody. Look for what you want, what gives you the best, the greatest satisfaction in life. This is what I would aim, I would like to do. You saw this in my film also. This gentleman who's the captain with the dark glasses, he is an amputee. He doesn't have one leg, yet he is flying. He's flying because he's resilient. He's flying because he wants to and because his spirit is invincible, it's unstoppable. He has gone back to airline flying with one 
leg and his country has allowed him to fly. Over here, if we have so much as a cut, we sit at home thinking that we are disabled or differently abled. Go ahead, do whatever it takes to do things in life. Ex explore the outdoors, nature. In my journey, you, I've tried to show you a lot of my friends, of what I've been doing, of how my friends have, uh, you know, shaped my future. On the left is the group from 99s, and this lady uh, with the necklace on the left with a rust color sweater. I wish somebody, one of y'all would know who she is, and I will give you a hint. She's from Afghanistan. A country which is in the middle of the worst crisis, a country which is depriving its women of civil rights, a country where women have really, really uh, struggled to do anything, to study and to work. This lady is none other than Latifa Nabizada. She is one of the first military Air Force pilots of Afghanistan. And I had the pleasure of meeting her in Vienna in Austria, and she's taken asylum over there. This was two years back and uh, the paintings you see at the back are done by a friend of mine. She's an artist. She's also a pilot. So women pilots have united each other across the world, not only by flying, but by so many other things. And this one, this exhibition was called women in light. I was invited for it. There was a musician. Latifa was there. And what did we learn from Latifa? She was married. Her sister and she were both the first uh, military helicopter pilots. And they went. They followed their dream. Their parents allowed them to follow their dream. They got married. Her sister, who was Laliuma, she died during childbirth. Latifa brought up her niece and her daughter as her own. And thereafter, she was stopped. She was banned from flying when the Taliban regime took over. Thereafter, she had to flee uh, Kabul because she feared for her safety. And now we are sheltering her and we are trying for her family to you know, come out of Afghanistan. So women have a lot of energy. Ma Shakti, Durga, we talk about women. Women have a lot, a lot that women can do. On the bottom photo is a play that I attended at Melbourne. And uh, we all heard about, of course, we didn't hear, we all know about 9-11, what happened, the events that unfolded that day, the two planes that crashed into the World Trade Center, and the whole of the US air network came to a standstill. All the planes were diverted, and the lady uh, standing next to me in a blue shirt with a white hair, is Beverly Bass, Captain Beverly Bass of American Airlines, and she was one of the pilots who was flying that day. And she diverted to Gander. Gander is such a small town, hardly, I think, less than 7,000 inhabitants, and plane loads of passengers diverted to Gander. The whole city, the whole town opened their hearts and their homes to the pilots who had uh, diverted with the planes and looked after those passengers. So again, it's a story where people can help other people. While I talk, I would also like to say that, you know, uh, there's a triangle and we are the centroid of the triangle. So what uh, am I trying to tell you? So one side and the apex will keep changing. So one side will be your career. One side will be your family and the other side will be your fitness. So another fear that I overcame quite late in life was the fear of water. After my children were born and after my daughter was born and I was, I think, almost by the time she was three, I tried to tread into water. I was so scared I wouldn't put my hand in a pool. I did not know. I did not know what was under water and so I was very scared. And now, as you can see, I swim every day. Of course, not in COVID, but I swim every day. That keeps me healthy. And here we are, all of us, you know, following a common sport so that we each can keep fit. Staying fit mentally and physically is one of the most important things, whichever way you can. Do yoga, go out. If you have nothing, at least walk in the outdoors. Walk, go to the trees and look for something. 
and look for some green tree. So many years passed and being a 737 captain Boeing at the youngest age thereafter Airbus uh, 300 captain and a training captain Airbus 330 flying those evacuation flights and thereafter you know being the first one from Indian Airlines to fly the Boeing 787 Dreamliner. It took me to new vistas to new horizons to airports where I had never dreamt of flying and well you may wonder I'm only talking about good things did I never fail in life? Was there no failure? Were there only accolades? No brickbats? Well, nobody's life can be without failures. And this is one place I failed miserably and I had to eat humble pie, so to say. So I would go to Tel Aviv, Israel, look out of my beautiful hotel and look at this lovely Mediterranean sea outside my window every day. I would walk, I would walk on the sand, but then man's quest woman's quest to achieve something is insatiable look at the beautiful skateboards and i thought yes this is the place i want to be and i want to also learn how to surf so i tried i booked two lessons and this is one place i failed i failed so miserably after the first lesson of two hours i had to give up well, I had to just, you know, uh, bite my ego and said, well, it's okay. I can't achieve everything in life. So I would like you to know that uh, people who look very successful and who look very happy also have had failures. And it's also okay to be a failure in a particular section. It's okay. It's okay to fail. It's okay to pass. If you move on, it's how you take it, how you move forward and look at the next goal. So don't stop. Don't don't think that just because in one position you have failed, you will not be successful in the other. Here you can see by the time it was 2017, both my children became captains. And that was a real proud moment for me. My husband at that time was with Air India. My son was with Air India. I was with Air India and my daughter with Indigo. September 2017, all of us became airline captains and I, maybe this was a record of sorts because all over the world, I don't think there's any family where everybody is an airline captain. And thereafter, when my daughter married, she also married an airline captain. So we are now five of us in our family. And yes, if you can inspire even one person in your life, I think your life's goal has been met. So I think I did well. I inspired my children. And moving forward, you know, conquering my fears, I also tried my hand at diving. And this was the acid test. This was the last bastion I actually wanted to conquer, to go deep. I had flown the heights of the sky, 43,000 feet. I had climbed Mount Fuji by then, 2014. And now I wanted to explore the deep blue, the deep blue in its real sense, deep. And now I'm a scuba diver, PADI certified. So this was in November 2019, just before uh, COVID, and I achieved my license. Like Mr. Rajput said, we went through a period of turmoil. It, I, I call it the startle effect, you know, in aviation, something when you're flying and something happens suddenly, which you're not ready for, it's called the startle event. This is the startle event which hit the aviation industry. Overnight, we were made redundant. Thousands and lakhs of us, not me, but thousands of my colleagues were made redundant. They lost their jobs, not only in aviation and flying, but in all the other areas because everything came to a standstill. Life came to a standstill. We had to learn a new way of life. It was a rebirth for many of us. Each one of us has lost a member in our families or related to us. It was a very difficult and trying time. And this is how we had to fly. It was scary. I'm almost looking like a surgeon sitting over there on my uh, the 787 Dreamliner seat, goggles, head, cover, mask, a PPE, gloves. You know, we, we got allergies by wearing gloves for so long. It was so hot. Uh, it was difficult to see, to talk, and to fly. It was not the easiest. This was a situation where 
the flight crew, the captains as well as the cabin crew were at their wits end to fly. We were scared. We were scared of the unknown. We were scared of the diseases that we uh, could carry with us or from us to different parts of the world. So we flew all over the world. We carried vaccines. We carried PPEs. This is what the world looked like. I'm sure some of you all will recognize this is the London's underground tube. Not a soul in sight. Oxford Street, where you cannot walk past because there's so many people on the roads every time. But this is what we had to go through. And this is what actually the, the human being, the humans can adapt so well. And that is what takes us forward. Adapt to change and be the change what you want to be. While, I, while in lockdown, I started studying and I had the opportunity now because I had all the time and thereafter started getting my promotions as a management pilot. I was elevated as the general manager of flight safety and as luck, I mean, I, I had started doing my courses in flight safety. I didn't know that I would be promoted and this was a really bolt out of the blue. So I was promoted. I had two offices, one in Bombay, one in Delhi, and I then thereafter became the chief of flight safety, looking after quality, looking after safety management systems, looking after sustainable the environment management and the documentation management. Compassion is what I learned at work. Patience was my name. Every colleague of mine knew me because and they love me, I think, because of our patients. And they said that to me not once, many times. They said, we've never seen anybody who has been so patient with us. And I learned that in order to move forward, I have to gain the trust of my colleagues, colleagues who had not, who I had not known in my journey in aviation because I was a pilot. I was a management pilot for the last 20 years, but that work was hardly anything compared to this work, which uh, needed a lot of responsibility and a lot of time. So compassion and patience I carried on. This was on uh, Gandhi Jayanti. So Swachh Bharat, we were celebrating Swachh Bharat with uh, the bust of uh, Gandhi Ji. And of course, we took an oath. All my colleagues started trusting me and I earned their trust and the respect in a short while. Hosting big webinars, hosting the highest uh, meetings, the safety management review, the board meetings. I, I didn't have a clue on how to do it, but practice makes perfect. And practice, practice, practice is what our guru, Iyengar uh, Yoga Guru says. So BK Iyengar, BKS Iyengar says, practice, practice, practice. Nothing is impossible. I started receiving my certificate from the University of Southern California and over a period of eight months received my certificate course in the aviation safety and uh, security. Uh, management. In January, there was a very big opportunity for me, which again I took and uh, which Mr. Rajput also spoke about. This was the polar flight. And uh, we flew from San Francisco to Bangalore right over the poles. We chose four young girls to operate this flight. And we showed to the world that, yes, what men can do, women can also do. We operated this flight in the thick of winter in the month of January. And uh, the airports, it was, it was a very challenging time because we had to keep the alternate airports open. We saved a lot of fuel. We, were, we are working towards a common goal, UN SDGs. COP26 net zero carbon emissions to the year 2050. Air India will follow. The world is opening up and this is when we have to wake up and show to the world that Air India will not be left, that India will not be left behind in the path of sustainability. I received my degrees, aviation safety management, human factors, and all my degrees, of course. Like I said earlier, I thought I would never have to study, but my life was with books and with studies. So never say never also. Here is, I was collaborating with the KSU Aviation. This is the only company in India which uh, offers taxi bot services. And at the moment, their services are readily available in Delhi and in Bangalore. And we see that Spice, uh, Spice Jet, the cargo aircraft is being taxied by a taxi bot. So what does it do? It saves, you know, we are all working towards COP26, like I said, net zero emissions. So this helps in reducing 
noise, reducing the fuel use, foreign object damage, carbon emissions, increasing energy uh, engine life. And uh, if you all saw the news recently, Air Asia has also started now with their Airbuses. So I think two airlines have already started. Air India has already done a trial flight, and we do hope that uh, I will be able to push this with the airlines in India even after my app superannuated. Trying to save trees, we have a very very good environment management system in Air India. And uh, a few of us got together. This tree was uh, uprooted during the recent cyclone in the month of June. I think it was uh, April or June. Uh, Tau, uh, Taupa or something it was called, yes. And it was uprooted. And we, got, we contacted the Bombay Municipal Commissioner. We got it uh, replanted. And these are the two trees that we replanted. These trees are more than 50 years old, and it was such a matter of pride for all our team that we could save two trees which had been uprooted. So a lot of things, you know, will a lot of opportunities will come your way. It's how you work alongside. This is work with the Boeing company, and, and they say, yes, our goal is zero. So net zero emissions, net zero incidents, zero near misses, and zero injuries. Collaborating with Boeing was a very pleasant experience. And here now comes my family. Now we are towards the end of our session. So let me show you my little grandson. He's two years old now. And my he occupies the place of pride in my life. Nothing can be more satisfying than seeing your children grow. And look, look at the love he has in his eyes, you know, for his grandmother. So the best moment of my life is to have a little baby. So my son's son, my children on the 24th of uh, June, a month before I superannuated, I wanted to fly with my children one last time while I was still in uniform. And I will get a little emotional while I say yes. So my daughter flew me from Bombay to Delhi. She's based in Bombay and she flew me from Bombay to Delhi and you can see her smiling and a young captain, very happy and easy to be in the shoes that were provided by her mother in more ways than one. When I say shoes, yes, I don't mean actual shoes. I say, yes, the path that was carved out. Little did I know that she would be a pilot also. Here is my son. I flew with him the same night from Delhi to Chicago. He's flying the Boeing 777 and yes, they are my children, they are my pride, and they will spread the word forward alongside me. As Mr. Rajput said, I continue my work with sustainability, sustainable aviation fuel. This is my heart, aviation education and sustainability. I will continue this till I can. And I think in every which way I will give my time, I will pay forward, pay it forward. I will give my time to anybody who wants it. Uh, on the left is Mr. Anjan, Dr. Anjan Ray. He is the director of Indian Institute of Petroleum, also a classmate with whom we started work while I was still in office. And here I am after superannuation. I visited Dehradun, and we continue this work. And the we have a uh, permanent representative of India at IQ, Dr. Shapali Juneja, who was joint uh, director at Civil Aviation. She is leaving no stone unturned in bringing sustainable aviation fuel to India. And we do hope that in the coming months, we shall be able to operate flights with sustainable aviation fuel, reducing the carbon imprint, reducing the carbon emissions and taking us and bringing us at par with the rest of the world. My last flight was from London to Delhi, London Heathrow to Delhi, very nostalgic with a fantastic crew. I did not request for any crew to be on board. I just left it to chance who would be on with me. And this lady that you see next to me, the tall lady, she and I joined Indian Airlines almost at the same time, Rupa. She joined a year after me, and she was the one who has flown with me on every aircraft. Poco Friendship, Boeing 737, Airbus 300, Airbus 330, and now Boeing 787. A fantastic flight. On the right, you can see, this is my last briefing at Heathrow Airport, and you can see Jadi Tato behind us. It means actually he had our back all these years. And who knows, today 
is a very important day for Air India. We will get to know who has won the financial bid to take over Air India. But never in the history of Air India did it happen that a leader, so we call this Jeep, which is on the left. I will just play it. You won't be able to hear it, but what the leader is trying to say is the leader is wishing the captain of Air India 162 a very happy retirement. And this was like a patrol car, you know, a leader car leading us to the takeoff position in London. A very emotional, uh, yes, a very emotional moment for all of us because it had never happened and it just reaffirmed my faith that, you know, when, when, when somebody uh, commends you for something, it just, you know, uh, raises your faith in humanity. So I continue to fly, maybe not in the real, maybe not in the real sense, but with my time to aviation and to all the different uh, avenues related to aviation, cutting a cake on arrival in Delhi up from landing from London. And of course, my final days where I was felicitated by our CMD, Mr. Rajiv Bansal, he's now the Secretary of Civil Aviation and a lot of women pilots in my office in Delhi. That's been my journey so far. And I think I have bared a lot of my life with you, maybe bored some of you, but commitment, what Mr. Rajput said is promises are meant to be broken. Promises can be broken, but a commitment is kept. So as I sit with you sharing my life's journey, I do hope that I've inspired at least a few, if not many, and best wishes to all of you. I'm here to answer any questions that you may have. And with this, I thank each one of you for having heard me out so patiently and for so long. We have a short clip which shows uh, my last landing into Heathrow. Uh, my team will play it for you. Just have a look at that. And then uh, Mr. Rajput will take over. So thank you very much. This was my last landing. You may not be able to hear it. I don't know. So we'll try. So I do hope that you all enjoyed the session with me and the three D's that I forgot. Dedication, discipline, and determination. So don't forget. These three phrases will take you through life's journey, no matter what. Thank you very much, all of you. Over to you, Mr. Rajput. Thank you for your time, everybody. Thank you very much, Nivedita Ji. This has been an amazing story. And I think everyone who has joined us would be feeling very inspired and feeling very happy that there have been so many takeaways uh, from your from your journey. You know, you have given so many uh, takeaways to to all the participants, uh, whether it is three Ds, uh, which uh, you talked about dedication, discipline, and uh, determination. But there have been many lessons that you have shared uh, with all the participants, that in life, never lower your guard. You know, the kind of lesson that was given by your instructor to you, that never take it anything for granted and be always cautious and careful. And I think that is the life lesson for all of us, that we have to always, uh, always uh, be careful and never be overconfident with anything. Uh, another very interesting thing you mentioned that, you know, you can have challenges and emergency, 
but always follow SOP. Uh, you know, when a difficult time comes, uh, you, you kind of sit down and see, you know, these are the things one, two, three, uh, what I must follow to come out of the difficult situation that I am in, rather than, you know, making mess of it, uh, you know, in hurriedly trying to, you know, do some quick fix. So I think um, uh, people who have joined um, uh, would also take another very nice takeaway that you've given them that, you know, you, all your life you keep learning. You know, never say uh, die uh, is, is the, the attitude. Uh, every day in our life we learn. We learn from our elders, we learn from our peers, we learn from our juniors, we learn from our children. And we learn from our grandchildren. So uh, keep your mind open, learn, and, 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 and you are never too old to do anything. Now, it could be deep diving, uh, which, uh, which you go uh, at, 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 at whatever young age uh, you decided to go. And I think uh, it's an inspiration for many young people uh, as to how uh, you should not have either the fear of failure in your mind or, 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 or fear of uh, uh, not taking up uh, something which otherwise uh, uh, might be causing you uh, some uh, inhibitions, but you can conquer. And you can only conquer when you first go and take the step to dive into it. So, so I think it's a, it's a great, uh, Great lesson, uh, a great lesson to say that you have to be trendsetter. You don't have to tick the boxes, you make the boxes. So I am sure, um, you know, all the participants uh, would have uh, made a note that you decide from where the line has to start, which when one of the movies Amitabh Bachchan says, or, or Shatruvan Sena says, the line starts from where I stand. So. So, so that's how the people have to take uh, take life, and 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 not um, not kind of uh, uh, others to dictate how the life has to take uh, turn for you and make the boxes for you. Um, always adapt to change. Uh, don't have a very fixed uh, mindset. Uh, life is not always. Uh, Always the way you plan, you plan, and you must plan. But uh, but the real thing is that uh, you you keep on uh, changing your course depending upon the situation, environment, circumstances, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, because um, every day is not same, every situation is not same, and therefore you need to adapt. Uh, to, to the circumstances that you are in. And last but not least, uh, in life, uh, there is always a payback time. And we all have to be conscious that this planet has given us so much. And the time comes when we need to kind of repay this debt to the environment, to the people, to all those who have given us opportunity to to shine, rise, and achieve as to how we can you know contribute uh, for the next generation going forward. So many lessons in one, and never say never. With this, uh, I'd like to thank you, Nivedita ji, and I'll see uh, check with uh, Nirupma whether there are any uh, questions from the uh, audience. If there are none, then I might ask you one or two questions. So, Nirupma, are there any questions from the audience? Sir, as such, there are there aren't any questions, but yes, a lot of praise is you know coming up with the from the panelist side. Uh, they are quite inspired from the journey of Ms. Nivedita. It's going to be a great change maker for them and for us too, sir. So, you may go ahead for the questions that we have. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Nirupma. Uh, Nivedita, I want to ask you, uh, you, you know, from the day you started, 
for your journey. And, and, and the day you finished your journey uh, with your last flight in the aviation, although your journey continues uh, in, in newer fields, uh, what is the kind of change that you have seen uh, in, in our country, in the working environment, in, in, the, uh, in the kind of uh, acceptance with the people or, uh, or, the, or the kind of hurdles that you would like to share with the people that you've encountered uh, in your journey? So, so I kind of, I'm sure people would be very interested to, to, to see this change uh, that you have experienced in all these years. Uh, okay, so I'll start with the change in aviation first, and then about the rest of uh, the world and the rest of the avenues. The change in aviation with respect to women, acceptability has increased by leaps and bounds. I think now passengers do not even give us a second look uh, when they see us, you know, as pilots. And uh, they know now that women are there to stay. The women are here to hold hands with the men counterparts in the cockpit. So acceptability has increased. The next one is that I'd like to talk about women pilots. You know, when we joined, because there were only one and two, and we were really uncomfortable in our role because we had to keep proving. What I see from my daughter and of, from the young girls is that they're so comfortable, you know, when they come in and they dress and they're working. So for them, it's this job is just like any other job. They don't think they're doing anything extraordinary. They don't think they're doing anything which is, uh, you know, out of the ordinary. So I think the comfort factor has improved a lot and girls and boys are here together. But what has not changed for me, as I see, is from the point of the parents. There is still a lot of uh, hesitation, you know, from the older generation, e even some who are younger than I am and they have young children. They don't want, they, they only want their children to do a certain thing. So what I would like to say is that just be be open to your children's dreams. You know, let them at least try what they want to do. Don't be fixated. Do not fix their minds. I mean, if you wanted to do a certain thing and you could not do it, you know, don't think that your children will fulfill your dreams. Of course, the work environment has changed also. I would say maternity policy, child care, everything has improved for women per se. From being the, from there being no maternity policy in the aviation world in Indian aviation, we now see so many women are married and are mothers and are continuing to fly. Yet there is a percentage of uh, uh, women and men who do not give importance to their careers and they while away their time and they do not respect what you talked about respecting everything while working is very very important. What is the other change I would like to talk about is about the ease of and availability of help and people are more aware. So as we share our life's journey with others, I think it becomes easier for generation next to make us and other women their role models. You know, the sports stars, the politicians, the movie stars, it's, uh, it's not enough to just be good and it's not enough to just uh, reach a position how to be successful. It's very important to share your life with the next generation. So I think with these changes and the importance to fitness, health care, and now very slowly mental health, it's picking up. Though mental health is, you know, always in, people don't want to talk about it. Yet, I think this is the most important, I think it's more important than physical fitness. Because if you're not mentally fit, I don't think you can do anything. And I think with the acceptance of women in many fields, other, I mean, you know, various fields like the Indian Navy, the Indian Air Force, they opened up their doors because when they saw Air India already had, Indian Airlines already had women pilots, they opened their doors. So acceptability of women has improved. Women are doing things which they had never thought of doing. And we are making ourselves available 
to the generation next. We are making time. And only when we talk can we spread our ideas. Otherwise, it's not possible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for sharing this, uh, this, this perspective. If I was to say that give one message to the audience, what would be your message to the audience for today? The most important is be passionate. Be passionate, who have that passion for whatever you want to do, whatever. I mean, if you're not passionate, you cannot so much as polish a shoe. It is passion is so important and commitment. Once you're passionate, you will be commitment. That is what took me through my entire journey of 37 years of being an airline pilot. Till the last day, I was passionate about my flight, about my work, about being kind to people, to be respectful and to respect. And I, I think without passion, if, if you lose the passion midway in your career, or if you think that the passion is dwindling, it's time for you to move on. It's time for you to move on because you may find something which interests you more. And if your job or your current work is not interesting enough, then you cannot give 200% to it. And if you don't give 200% to it, it's not right for you to be there. Please give the position to somebody else. So be passionate in what you do and put your heart and soul in everything that you do. Only then will you give the best. So wear your heart on your sleeve every day to work. Thank you very much, Nivedita ji. All things must come to an end. And with this, I'm going to finally give a thank you to you for coming, sharing your, your uh, journey with us, and giving us a um, very life lesson. And one of them that I can add, which sums up everything that, that you said, is focus, focus, and focus. If you do that, you can achieve all your dreams. It is no dream is too high. They are all within your reach. So all my fellow colleagues who joined us today, I'm sure uh, you will uh, you will take this uh, lesson for your life and achieve many greater heights in times to come. God bless you and thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. And I do look forward to working with, uh, with you, with anybody who wants to have my time and I will share my experiences with anybody and my time with anybody who wants it and who needs it. Thank you very Thank much, you. everybody. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.